All right. Hello and uh, welcome everyone. My name is Jos Wetzels and uh, I'll be presenting this joint work with Carlo Meyer and Vilash and Monsami on the automatic identification and classification of proprietary cryptographic primitives in binary code. Uh, today we'll start off with an introduction and uh, some pri prior work that's been done in this area and then move on to a solution overview and the experimental evaluation before finishing off with uh, the conclusions. Let's start with a little bit of background first. As you might be aware, even though over the past decades, a consensus has formed against proprietary cryptography, it continues to persist, especially in various embedded systems. And this presents a significant obstacle to security evaluations in certification, secure procurement, and pen testing efforts, since it requires a lot of manual reverse engineering, which could lead to false conclusions about robustness. In addition, any of this research that's done under NDA or is restricted by court injunctions, as has been the case in the past, will leave other affected parties in the dark and having to repeat this effort again and again. So there's a concrete industry need for the automated detection of as of yet unknown cryptographic primitives in binary code. Now, in order to meet this need, a solution would have to meet three criteria. First, it should be able to identify unknown cryptographic algorithms. So algorithms that might belong to a known uh, cryptographic class, but have specifics that are not uh, known yet to the analyst. Secondly, it should be efficient on real world binaries. And third, it should not rely on full firmware emulation or dynamic instrumentation due to issues around platform heterogeneity and peripheral emulation in embedded systems. So let's take a look at the prior work in this area in light of these criteria. Two areas in which a lot of practical prior work exists are the recognition of dedicated cryptography functionality in the form of APIs, libraries, or hardware features, and the recognition of various constants, uh, such as IVs, nothing up my sleeve numbers, and lookup tables that are used in many algorithms. Both of these approaches, even though very helpful in uh, other applications of this problem, are unsuitable for our particular need since they are inherently incapable of detecting unknown algorithms. While the latter also has the drawback of being incapable of detecting algorithms that don't rely on any fixed data or use functions rather than LUTs to generate this data. Next, there's prior work in using code heuristics, uh, one flavor of which matches mnemonic constant tuple signatures and thus suffers from the same drawbacks as data signatures. And the other flavor determines the ratio of bitwise arithmetic instructions on a per function or per ba basic block ratio as a crypto indicator. Now, the main drawbacks here are the fact that while it might help narrow down an analyst's search to particular areas of the code, it's both susceptible to false positives, for example, through the setting of flags or the using of shift registers for other purposes, um, and it lacks any granular identification. So you might know this could be crypto, but you don't have any further indications. Still have a lot of manual analysis to do. Um, there have also been proposals to use deep learning in this area, but these were unsuitable according to our criteria as well, due to the inherent inability to classify unknown algorithms and their reliance on dynamic instrumentation. And then there's data flow analysis. One approach attempts to identify crypto routines by their static relation between the functions and their inputs and outputs through a combination of taint analysis and entropic change evaluation. And the other approach uses dynamic instrumentation and symbolic execution to extract Boolean formulas for comparison to reference implementations. Now, both of these approaches, again, fail to meet our criteria due to the reliance on dynamic evaluation and or their inherent inability to detect unknown algorithms. And finally, there's data flow graph isomorphism, uh, an approach which uh, um, most recently had been proposed by Les Trignot et al., which generates a data flow graph and compares it to those of known algorithms using Ullmann's subgraph isomorphism algorithm. While we consider it the strongest among the existing prior work, there's a few limitations to this approach. First of all, there is no systematic way to deal with data dependent branches, which presents a problem since uh, the class of a cryptographic primitive often only becomes clear once analysis incorporates conditional instructions. 
For example, uh, as you can see in uh, uh, the picture on the right, in a stream cipher, the key stream generator typically operates in a loop driven by a length parameter. Simply computing the day of G from uh, the basic blocks will represent at most a single iteration and miss crucial characteristics as a result. So this brings us to our own approach, which is rooted in the observation that the vast majority of proprietary cryptography out there still falls within established primitive classes, such as Feistel networks or substitution uh, permutation networks or linear feedback shift registers and so on. We developed a taxonomy for this based on our prior work, as you can see in the picture. Um, and our goal is to develop structural signatures which capture an entire taxonomical class, regardless of the particulars, by means of combining the DFG isomorphism approach with symbolic execution. Our work makes the following contributions here. First of all, we overcome the limitations of prior work by combining subgraph isomorphism with symbolic execution. Secondly, we propose a new domain-specific language for defining structural properties of cryptographic primitives. And thirdly, we provide a free and open source implementation and evaluation of our approach against real-world binaries. So let's take a deeper look at our solution. On this slide, you can see the identification and classification pipeline of our solution. Given a function entry point, uh, a set of data flow graphs is generated, which are then normalized and purged into their canonical forms and subsequently compared to the structural signatures using the subgraph isomorphism, resulting in a classification verdict. We construct our DFGs incrementally as we pass over the instructions, determining the nodes by their operand types, as explained on the slide. One issue is that semantically equivalent code can yield different DFGs due to architecture, compiler, or implementation nuances. This is why we normalize them into a canonical form using a combination of operation simplification, elimination of common sub-expressions, memory access operand substitution, and associativity merging. When extracting our DFG, we are often faced with conditional instructions and the choice of which path to take. We distinguish determined conditions um, where the outcome is determined by preceding instructions and underdetermined conditions where this is not the case. For the latter, we have to pick an evaluation outcome ourselves, true, false, or both. In the latter case, we create two graphs. Now, the issue is that always taking both maximizes code coverage, but is unfeasible in practice. So we have to come up with a picking strategy in the form of a path oracle. We want to be able to obtain a DFG representing n iterations of a cryptographic primitive, as you can see on the slide, where a simple stream cipher has an underdetermined conditional branch derived from a function parameter. So during each counter encounter with our conditional instruction, we have two choices. We either perform another iteration or we return and quit. In order to meet our goal, upon the first encounter, we take both execution paths. False will return immediately and true will take us to another underdetermined condition at the exact same execution address. So for the second encounter and beyond, we keep replicating the decision that caused the revisit to occur until the end visit and then take the opposite path, i.e. return. In this way, we obtain two data flow graphs, one re representing zero iterations and the other representing n iterations. Now, our resulting DFGs will contain elements that are not part of the semantics, which we will purge out. Leaf nodes are part of the semantics if they either have return values, they have call operations, or store operations to addresses not relative to the stack pointer. Leaf nodes, which do not meet these criteria, are removed until we hit a fixed point. Our DFGs are then compared to our signatures using Allman's subgraph isomorphism algorithm. I won't go into detail about it, but despite MP completeness, it performs quite well for our purposes. The picture on the right shows a signature match as a subgraph. Now, in order to perform our matching, uh, we use express cryptographic primitive taxonomical class signatures. Uh, you can see some examples of how this is done on the slide. Ultimately, such signatures are nothing more than the DFG of their idealized form, but to account for expression flexibility, we designed a domain-specific language, which you can see illustrated on the slide on the left. 
It allows you to identify a class with a bunch of variants, each of which are defined by labeled expressions consisting of suitable nested operators and operands, as you can see in the middle and the right of the slide. Now, in order to showcase our method, we have proposed several example signatures, uh, which you can find uh, in detail in the paper, ranging from algorithm specific ones for AES, MD5, and so on, to generic ones for Faisal networks, linear feedback shift registers, sequential block permutations, and so on. And we've used these signatures to evaluate our solution. And that brings us to the experimental evaluation part of the talk. We've evaluated our solution for accuracy and running time on a mid-range Ryzen 3600 machine with 16 gigabyte of RAM against a few test sets, including the one used in prior work by Lester and Yaw, open WRT shared libraries and executables, various public proprietary cipher implementations, and a collection of real-world embedded firmwares from PLCs and ECUs. In order to set up our evaluation, we have to pick a number, n, for the number of algorithm iterations within a DFG. And the value should be low as it correlates with DFG size. After some deliberations, it turned out picking four was very sufficient. For our comparison with the Lestrian test set, we used algorithm specific signatures to warrant a fair comparison. And here we correctly identified all the primitives within a decent time frame without requiring code fragment selection heuristics like previous work did. When we evaluated our solution against OpenWRT, we identified nearly all the primitives using generic rather than algorithm specific signatures. And finally, on our test set of publicly available proprietary algorithm implementations, we also identified nearly all the primitives using just generic signatures. Well, similarly, on the embedded firmware images, we identified all the primitives present except for Megamos. A later analysis revealed that the identification failed due to reliance on implicit flows, which we discuss in more detail in the paper. So that brings us to the conclusions. Unfortunately, proprietary cryptography usage in embedded binaries continues to persist and pose a problem to security analysis efforts. Any solution aiming to tackle this issue should be capable of automatically and efficiently identifying unknown cryptographic algorithms without relying on emulation or binary instrumentation, and to the best of our knowledge, no prior work existed satisfying those criteria. So we proposed a platform and architecture agnostic solution, combining DFG isomorphism with symbolic execution, operating on a custom DSL to identify unknown cryptographic algorithms. And finally, we implemented and evaluated a proof of concept that performed well in terms of accuracy and running time against relevant targets. And that's all. Thank you for listening. And more details, you can check out the paper and the reference code or send us an email.